So first of all, uh, my name is Natalia Gon. Uh, I work as an executive of innovation and entrepreneurship at Uruguay's National Research and Innovation Agency. And I want to take a moment to thank Enrich uh, in the name of Annie for giving us the opportunity to take part in this series of talks. And in this module, we will cover the topic of understanding the business innovation ecosystem in Latin America specifically delving into the trends of Uruguay's business and innovation ecosystem. And if we look at the, the index, um, uh, I want to give you an overview of we, what we will be discussing today. We will first in introduce Uruguay as a place to do business. Then we will talk about uh, the agency and the mission and vision of, of the agency. Uh, following, we will de delve deeper into what the Uruguay Innovation Hub is, uh, which is a specific initiative we are working on uh, as of today. And lastly, we will finish by presenting the main innovation trends in the market and where the country is heading in this regard. Starting with the first topic that is Uruguay and why Uruguay. Uruguay uh, is known as uh, one of the most reliable countries to do business in one of the most economically attractive regions of the world, which is Latin America. Uh, it holds a favorable uh, business climate, social and political stability, uh, also respect of rule of law, stable macroeconomic policies that help the promotion of foreign capital investments in general. The country has a solid track record uh, that offers certainty, attractive tax benefits, and a dynamic innovation ecosystem. Uh, and these are some of the reasons why several global and regional companies have chosen Uruguay as a place and as a hub where, from where to do business. Uh, in this sense, uh, we always say that it's a key player in Latin America in terms of sustainability, scientific knowledge, and also technological maturity. And as we will see in, in one of the slides, Uruguay consistently leads Latin America and the Caribbean rankings relevant to uh, investors. Uh, for example, it ranks number one in democracy, low corruption, and rule of law, also quality of life, civil freedoms and social mobility. Um, on top of that, uh, we are on a strong path of strong formation in terms of uh, energy policy, which positions the country at the forefront of renewable energy using the world. Uh, and just to give you some numbers, between 2017 and 2021, 94% of Uruguay's electricity generation was originated uh, from renewable sources. So this speaks of, of a country that is uh, betting on, on re renewable uh, energies. And the latter uh, is supported by a strong investment uh, incentive regime, which include ample fiscal exemptions to investments, attractive free trade zones, ports and free airports, uh, and also the fact that, for example, uh, both foreign and local investors are treated equally against the law which is a, a real benefit when it comes to uh, international investments coming to Uruguay. Following, um, as was discussed, we will present Annie. Uh, and Annie, as, as I mentioned at the beginning, is the national agency uh, dedicated to the promotion of research and innovation, R&D, in Uruguay. It fosters research activities and the application of knowledge to the productive and social reality of the country. It seeks to make science and innovation key pillars of the country, and specifically of the country's economic growth, social development and sustainability, and positions the country as an ideal place from which to grow towards the region and the world. Annie has four main areas of work through, and through each of them, uh, it makes funds available to the public, for example, for research projects, for national and international postgraduate scholarships, and also incentive programs to promote innovation and entrepreneurship in companies and startups as well. Some of the key differenti differentiators of, of ANI are firstly, that we are focused on implementing 
the national agenda uh, in terms of science, technology and innovation, looking to promote specific sectors uh, such as deep tech, biotech, green tech and education. Uh, secondly, we hold open calls for research and innovation projects and we conduct objective evaluation processes. Third, we recognize we are recognized as being unique in the country in terms of uh, our project governing, also the monitoring and evaluation capabilities that we have for, for these projects. And lastly, we um, design our instruments based on evidence through monitoring results and impact relations, which also allows us to constantly improve our instruments based on evidence, which is uh, a key differentiator from, from maybe other actors in, in the country. And how do we add value for all of this to happen? We offer uh, personalized advice for project applications in each of the, the areas that I mentioned. We pursue excellence through feedback and continuous improvement processes. We also aim to have lean, agile and transparent selection processes for the projects. And lastly, we have a large network of over 60 national and international strategic partners in over 20 countries that help strengthen and enhance the country's capabilities in R&D. After introducing uh, what we do at ANI, now uh, I'm going to talk about a specific initiative that we are um, working on uh, to, to improve the, the Uruguayan uh, entrepreneurship and innovation ecosystem which is called the Uruguay Innovation Hub, which is a, a nationwide initiative aimed at propelling Uruguay at the forefront of the knowledge economy. And by doing this, it looks to foster a thriving, disruptive and sustainable economy in Uruguay. And with this program, uh, the government is also seeking to promote and accelerate science, technology and innovation ventures that lead the country towards uh, as I mentioned, a knowledge-based economy, establishing itself as a global innovation hub. So basically, it, it looks uh, to position Uruguay as a hub from whence where to do business uh, in the region and in the world, attracting startups from around the region, investors, and also giving more opportunities to our local startups. And what is the opportunity to, to, to do this program at this moment? We always say that the country is an, at an ideal time to, to position itself as, as this innovation hub in the South. Um, it is firstly the right time to promote the development of sectors of high added value, generating policies that allow, allow Uruguay uh, and the Uruguayan innovation ecosystem to make a qualitative leap and, a, and ha having a great internationalization. Uh, and also on the other hand, attract companies and entrepreneurs and talent from the region and the world. And the second reason why there is an opportunity is that we co should consider that Uruguay has uh, throughout the years developed a competitive advantages at the scientific, technological and sustainable development levels. Um, and this would help uh, strengthen the already consolidated basis in software development, scientific research and renewable energies that the country has. Uh, and this is something that we can leverage as a country to, to implement a program like this. Um, and lastly, regarding the opportunity, um, we also see that there is an opportunity to achieve a larger pipeline of successful startups with global ambitions and also help them internationalize faster if firstly we can generate the conditions to attract investment from venture capital funds with an intelligent strategy at the regional level and secondly if we manage to attract companies and projects from around the region to be central a central place uh, for innovation to take off in latin america so that's a little bit about the opportunity um, and now I will go deeper into uh, the program and, and the different components and instruments that the, the, the program has. 
all of the, them look to, to as I mentioned before, look to strengthen the entrepreneurial ecosystem, attract talent and, and investment opportunities, and enhance local innovation. The first one is an acceleration program um, that looks to generate the conditions for the implementation in Uruguay of an acceleration program focused on tech-based ventures. Uh, the program will offer financial support for accelerators to set up in the country uh, and also the possibility of co-investing in the most promising startup of, of, of each batch. Uh, and in this uh, in this program, the, the selected startups will uh, receive mentoring, financial support, technical support, and access to a large network of regional and international contacts. Um, the second initiative is a company builder that it's very similar to the accelerator, only that in this case it looks to generate the conditions for the implementations of, of company builders with a focus on biotech startups because we recognize that the biotech community uh, needs uh, need, need a, other type of support that, that traditional um, tech-based companies. Uh, and it will function in a similar way. There will be um, a financial support for the company builder to come and to set up shop in, in Uruguay, and also the, the opportunity of, of co-investing with the most promising startups of, of, of the program. Um, the second initiative, uh, the third initiative of uh, of the Uruguay Innovation Hub uh, is an innovation campus, which is the physical part of the campus, uh, the, of the of the program, uh, which entails the creation of this physical space that brings together for projects from these different disciplines uh, in in a single place. There will be uh, it will place in a technology park here in Uruguay. Uh, and it will have space for co-working uh, co spaces, also space for uh, laboratories to set up shop, um, for um, yeah, corporations that, that look for a place to set, set up shop in Uruguay as well. The idea of this place is, is, is to have um, a physical space to, to promote synergy between all the actors that will be part of this program. Also, the company builder and the accelerator will have the chance of uh, being installed in, in, in this physical space. The fourth initiative, uh, it's uh, it's linked to, to the, the latter, but it's different in the sense that we will promote the, the installation in Uruguay of open labs uh, that use state-of-the-art technology and resources to make it easier, easier for startups to prototype and test before expanding their products uh, or services, allowing them to reduce risk, improve quality and increase competitiveness. And these labs will have the chance of uh, setting up shop in, in this uh, in innovation campus or throughout the country, but they will have the support of, of the program because we think it's central to, to the idea that we want to promote with this program. Then we have uh, the, the the instrument that is called the Fund to Fund, which is one of the, the biggest of, of this uh, whole initiative, which seeks to finance the creation of investment funds uh, here in Uruguay with the purpose of investing in the form of equity in local and regional startups based in Uruguay, either totally or partially. Uh, and these investment funds will be selected uh, through an open call to act as lead investors of mutually independent investment vehicles with public uh, and private investment through a matching fund scheme. Um, so basically the, 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 the Uruguay government will act as, as an LP and we will select the GPs uh, to, to, win, to make this happen. Um, and th this, this um, specific initiative is something we're very excited uh, to promote. Um, and that would be basically uh, the, a, a nutshell of, the, of what the Uruguay Innovation Hub uh, will be. And lastly, to, to address the last point of this presentation, regarding innovation trends. As was mentioned before, 
Uruguay has competitive advantages in terms of the scientific, technological and sustainable uh, capabilities. And this presents opportunities for development of a new innovation era focused on sectors such as deep tech, biotech and green tech, which are uh, the three sectors that uh, the government is also trying to uh, promote with the innovation hub. Uh, and I will refer to each of them briefly. Uh, firstly, there's biotech, which uh, composes uh, the concept of One Health and its different orientation, which can be human, animal, environmental health, as well as food, pharma and other applications. Uh, and here we have, we can uh, quote an example uh, of a success case uh, of, of this industry that already happened in Uruguay, uh, which is that researchers from the Institute Pasteur of Montevideo and Uruguay's Faculty of Chemistry uh, made a study uh, of how they can take advantage of the sugar contained in the rice husk to transform it into compounds for manufacturing of medicines that will be used for the treatment of inflammatory diseases. So this is just one of the example studies happening right now in Uruguay in this uh, sector. Um, then there's green tech that uh, includes uh, sustainable technologies such as renewable energy, the circular economy, new materials, electromobility, uh, and particularly, particularly green hydrogen uh, that right now the country is making a, a big investment on, on this uh, area. And third, um, as for deep tech, um, we see within the framework of the current challenges uh, of big data, IoT, cybersecurity, cybersecurity and fintech, with artificial intelligence and blockchain as the new technologies, as some of the new technologies on which to base this development. Um, and here I would also like to quote a, a success story uh, that when we can take the example of Strike, which is a Uruguayan startup uh, that offers a continuing penetration te testing platform that seeks to expand access to cybersecurity in Latin America. Penetration tests are simulated cyber attacks to detect vulnerab vulnerabilities in, in, in companies. And specifically, the startup less than a year after starting operations in the pilot phase, they obtain a seed round uh, of 5.4 million, uh, led by Greenhound Capital. So this is just one of the examples in this sector that is uh, booming right now, um, which is also a, a project that was supported by Annie uh, in its seed stage. So we are very proud of of this achievement. Um, and that's uh, basically uh, the end of this presentation. Um, at the end, I leave uh, all the contact information if you want to delve deeper into any of these topics. And, and I also like to thank again for this opportunity. Hello again, and thank you very much for participating in this, this class and this topic. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to have you with us in our program. So I would like to, to thank you again and just say that uh, the Enriching Lux Center, it's an association uh, that's located in Latin America. And obviously we put together, as I mentioned before, we put together Europe and Latin America. As a center, we coordinate this, we coordinate the services, and we are at your disposal to support you in any time, in any sense, uh, to make possible our main objective, which is innovation, internationalization, and make sure that we come to, to the reality and projects that will benefit not only our business and our companies, but also the whole humanity. Thank you very much for being there, for being here with us. Bye-bye.